Railroad, backbone of the nation, foundation for its greatest fortunes, carved out of desert wasteland, every inch sweated for, fought for. Sweating? Fighting? Isn't that a little unladylike? Very unladylike. But ladies don't build railroads. Of course not. Ladies marry them. <laughs> sure you added this up right? Looks pretty good to me. Local neatness doesn't count. Try putting your glasses on. Mike, did your list include the rent we haven't paid yet? No, I forgot about that. And unless I miss my guess, that's a polite reminder. <laughs> well, fancy meeting you here. And Mr. Toby, come in. Come in. Uh, will you join us in a cup of coffee? It's heating up. So am I. Now, now, Mr. Toby, if you're worried about last month's rent... Oh, I'll... I haven't gotten around to that yet. I'm still worrying about the month before. <laughs> well, I know you ladies think that I'm just an old grouch. Oh, no, you're not. You're really very sweet uh, for a manager. Right, girls? Absolutely. Why, you're the nicest, most understanding building manager we've ever had. Mr. Toby? <laughs> oh, Mr. Toby! <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. It's nice to know that your last memory of me will be a pleasant one. Because in exactly 24 hours, you, your bags, and furniture will be deposited on the street. In 24 hours, ladies. Good day. Mr. Toby... Oh, uh, correction. You and your bags will be leaving. But since I own the furniture, that stays. I would suggest you start packing. Well, last one to finish packing is a rotten egg. <laughs> Bye, lovely apartment. Scene of our girlish dreams. Now will I shed one last briny tear for thee. Sayonara, divine Ming vase. Adieu, stately Louis the Fourteenth chair. Arrivederci, O oh noble Caesar. Farewell, lovely, lovely apartment. Oh, Greta, stop it. You're fogging my glasses. <laughs> no, Greta, keep going. You just rang a bell, a cash register bell. Mike, this is no time to lose your head when all about us are losing theirs. But don't you get it? Ming bars, antique chairs, bust. This apartment isn't filled with furniture, it's filled with collateral, the kind you can borrow money on. Mike, when it comes to high finance, I've got to hand it to you. But this furniture belongs to Mr. Toby. Local, please, don't bother about trifles. This is a mere paper transaction. Well, gee, I hope Mr. Toby and the jury will take that into consideration. Loco, Mr. Toby will never know. We'll redeem the furniture before he can even say, Stop, thief. <laughs> excellent, excellent. A genuine Louis XIV. It's a very fine piece. Now, you understand, we don't want to sell the chair. We're just borrowing on it. Oh, of course not. Uh, $375. But it's been in the family for ages. Oh, how can we part even for a moment with something that is bound up in so many memories of happier days? Make it 400. Dear, dear, believe me, I share your tender emotions. $375. We'll take it. In cash, if you don't mind. Oh, no, of course not, of course not. Here we are. But remember, ladies, if this is not 
redeemed within 30 days, it will be sold at auction. Ah, uh, if this lovely old chair could only speak, eh? It's a good thing it can't. It would be yelling, help police. <laughs> Come on, Loco, your time's almost up. Oh, I've got a word. R-E-N-T. <laughs> Can't you think of anything but rent? Greta's right, Loco. For once, we had it on time. Not like last month when we had to hock the Louis XIV. Last month, the 30 days, Mr. Simmons' warning. If we didn't redeem the chair, he was going to sell it at auction. And he's having an auction tonight. It says so in the papers. Well, goodbye, penthouse. Hello, penitentiary. <laughs> we'll just have to go down there and bid that chair in. Well, what are we going to use for money? I said bid, not buy. Come on. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, is that all I am offered for this wonderful clock? $1,400? $1,400? Do I hear $15? $1,500. No, we're getting someplace. Fifteen hundred dollars. Do I hear sixteen? Going once for fifteen. Going twice for fifteen. Sold to that gentleman for fifteen hundred dollars. Gosh, he must be loaded buying a piece for fifteen hundred dollars. Next item, please. Oh, look, there's our chair. All right, everybody spread out. And remember, we can't let anyone get that chair. And don't let Mr. Simmons see us bidding on it, either. He knows we don't have any money. He'll never sell it to us. Come on. Greta! Greta! <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, this exquisite Louis XIV chair Notice the excellent condition of the tapestry. Now, who'll start the bidding at 250? Who'll say 250? All right, I'll say it. Two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> we sell things cheap here, but we don't give them away. <laughs> who'll say $250? $250. I have $250. You're bidding on it? It's a lovely Louis XIV. Louis XIV? Don't you believe it? It isn't even a Louis XIII. <laughs> so ugly. I have $250. Do I hear $300? 300 300 350 <laughs> Trying to bid it up, not down. Who'll say 500? If you're smart, you'll let her have it for 400. Why, that chair is hundreds of years old. Exactly. 500. 501. 501? You're lucky she took you off the hook. That piece of trash isn't even worth one. 600. I have 600. 600 bid. You're just wasting your money. Tell him you made a mistake. Who'd want a monstrosity like that in their home? Going for 600. Going for 600. 650. <laughs> Madam, I bow to your charming feminine strategy. In fact, I bow out. The chair is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Going once, going twice. Sold for six hundred and fifty dollars to that charming lady. <laughs> well, now, don't get excited, Mr. Simmons. I'm not excited. But just tell me one thing. How do you intend to pay for that chair? It's easy. We'll simply hock the piano. We'll <laughs> look at it tomorrow. And don't forget to bring your checkbook. I give up. I give up. I don't know what he's so sore about. We're giving him business. The business. Oh. Leaving so soon? Well, hello there. Oh, and thanks again for letting me have that chair. 
old family heirloom, you know. I really feel indebted. Well, how about repaying the debt by letting me take you home? My car's just outside. Well, that's very sweet of you, Mr. Uh... Uh, Jameson. Frank Jameson. Uh... Well, Hanson. Uh, Greta Hanson. Oh, uh... Miss. <laughs> Wow. I wonder how much she had to bid for him. What happened with that fellow? Who is he? Was he nice? Where'd you go? What oh, is he? Just relax, and I'll tell you everything. In the first place, he's a very charming guy. Is he available? In the second place, he's a real gentleman. Fine, fine, but is he available? And in the third place... He's available. <laughs> he should have gotten to the third place first. <laughs> you know, such an attractive man his age would be married. Well, he was once, but not anymore. Any other entanglement? There was a girl in Chicago up until a few months ago, but well, I guess I'm getting him on the rebound. Oh, well, that's the best way. After a couple of bounces, they're just numb enough to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Greta. What's with all the groceries? Well, Frank is flying in. He called me from Washington. And he sounded so exhausted, I suggested a quiet, home-cooked dinner right here at the apartment. The guy almost flipped. Great thinking, Greta. But... You know, I think tonight is going to be the night he pops the... <laughs> what, is, what is this? Mr. Simmons, it seems the piano wasn't worth more than 200 fish. And the rest of the rare old antiques were just a lot of rare old pieces of junk. The whole shebang came to just barely $650. Well, why didn't you tell him to keep the chair instead of taking all the furniture? I tried, but Mr. Simmons said a deal is a deal. Well, there goes a nice home-cooked dinner. We could fix the place up a little. Or we could bring the stove in from the kitchen. The stove in from the kitchen? Well, if you threw a shawl over it, you could call it a high five. <laughs> sure, and then we could turn it up to broil and get some hot music. <laughs> I'll just have to tell him it's all. Wait a minute. I don't know where to find him. He's coming right here from the airport. Oh, great. Poor Greta, all set for a touchdown, and the game has to be called on account of no field. <laughs> Such a nice guy. A wedding ring would get us out of this whole mess. Well, that's right. We could hawk the ring. <laughs> Just a thought. I'd never have known it. You keep... Wait a minute. I just got a thought of my own. We'll create an atmosphere where furniture would be out of place. What? We'll have a Hawaiian luau. But, Mike, I told you he's expecting a quiet home-cooked dinner. Well, your home happens to be in Hawaii. <laughs> Besides, he just thinks he wants a home-cooked meal. Believe me, the important thing with a man isn't the food on his dish. It's the dish on his lap. <laughs> you just get something cooking in here, and we'll do the cooking out in the kitchen. Oh, gee, I don't know, Mike. My cooking doesn't exactly set the world on fire. I wouldn't say that. Every time we eat it, we get heartburn. <laughs> it's settled. A luau. A luau. Wow. <laughs> Remember, you and I are just servants in this setup. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's authentic Hawaiian. <laughs> well, no servant problem so far. Oh, well, that must be him. Places everyone. <laughs> Lights. Action. <laughs> Frank, darling. Greta. Here, let me take your thing. Thank you. Now, all the way up from Washington, I kept thinking about my beautiful Greta preparing a home-cooked meal just for me. Oh, well, as long as the servants are I not... still think it was a very thought... <laughs> well, I, I forgot to tell you, my home is in Honolulu, so we're having a home-cooked Hawaiian meal, you know, luau. Luau. Oh, would you like a drink? No, thank you. I... Oh, of course. You must be terribly, terribly starved. Here, sit right down here. That's right. Dinner's almost ready. How's it going, Mike? I've seen more comfortable guys in straight jackets. <laughs> Look at that food. I, I must say, it looks like the real thing, too. 
you must have had quite a job clearing out the furniture. Oh, that was easy. Getting it back is the hard part. <laughs> oh, I, I hope you like Hawaiian food. Oh, I do, I do. Except for one thing, I'm quite allergic to pineapple. <laughs> Second course coming up. Oh, don't let me spoil your dinner. Oh, don't be silly. There are lots of other things. Like what? Well, like, uh, it's a surprise. Well, just a minute, Mike. I'm doing the best I can. A shake of salt, and it's yours. <laughs> there we are. Mona and Lani, coming up. <laughs> Well, what have we here? Oh, well, this is, uh, um, uh, tell him, Missy. Molokai Lilani, Miss Hanson's specialty. <laughs> yes, that's it. Well, your specialty must be something. <laughs> What's wrong? Don't you like it? Delicious. Wonderful. course coming up. It really was delicious. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Look, honey, let, let, let's forget about this Hawaiian food. I know a wonderful restaurant. But you must be so tired from your trip and everything. I tell you what, I'll, I'll call them and, and have them send the stuff up here. Oh, no, please don't. Now, that's it. It's all settled. Honey, your phone's dead. I know. It breathed its last this morning. <laughs> I don't get it. How come? Well, it's an old phone company custom when you don't pay your bill. <laughs> Frank, I've got a confession to make. Girls, come on out here. I'm sorry about the Molokai. The cap came off the... Oh, maybe if I put some sugar on it, it might... We have some wonderful canned salmon in the closet, girls. Frank, you might as well know, these servants are my two roommates, Mike and Loco. And as far as the Hawaiian Islands being my home, I've never been further than Coney Island. Well, you once went to Staten Island. <laughs> as for this charming setup, we didn't clear out the furniture, we hawked it. Greta, honey, I don't give a hoot about your finances or your furniture. It's you I'm interested in. Do you mean that, Frank? Of course I do, honey. Is this a proposal? Well, Frank, this is so sudden. Well, wait a minute now. Don't I have anything to say here? All right, honey, say something. I accept. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Right, I'm so happy for you. And to make it official, my lawyer will be here in the morning with some papers. Lawyer? Well, engagement rings are so old-fashioned. I thought I'd be a little more novel and give you... Well, uh, how about a little oil well? Oil? That's okay, isn't it? Okay, I think it's darling. <laughs> I'll say. I'm just wondering where you're going to put it. <laughs> of course, Bermuda's simply divine for a honeymoon. Mike, how does this look? I was wondering if this were up here. No, I think I'd leave it the way it is in the center. Loco, we're all very happy about Greta and Frank, but must you keep whistling, here comes the bride all day long? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Thank you, lawyer. Now, remember, when you hand you those papers, don't appear anxious. That's right. Read them carefully. Mm. Oh, but sign them first. <laughs> I'm John Whitcomb, Mr. Jameson's attorney. Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Um, I'm Greta Hansen, and these are my friends, Mike McCall and Loco Jones. How do you do? Hello. Pleasure. Frank mentioned that you were going to call on me today. Mm -hmm. Now, just make yourself comfortable, Mr. Whitcomb. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jameson instructed me to draw up some papers for your signature. He transferred one of his oil properties to you, Miss Hansen. 
Oh, he shouldn't have. Yeah, perhaps not. I beg your pardon? No, oh, I'm sorry. I suppose it's really none of my business, but... Well, I've been more than an attorney for Mr. Jameson. I've been a friend, a family friend, for over 20 years. And I'm very concerned about Mrs. Jameson. But Mrs. Jameson is no longer his wife. So that makes Mr. Jameson perfectly free to honeymoon with another honey. <laughs> uh, that's true. But she needs him, and deep down, he needs her, too. But before you, there was another girl in Chicago. But he soon realized she wasn't for him. Oh, he told me all about that. He was all set to go back to his wife when he met you. He was? Now, Greta, Frank's a big boy. He knows his own mind. Yes, but you don't throw away 20 years of marriage, companionship, and devotion just like that. How do you throw it away? <laughs> I didn't realize it was like that. Loco. The smelling salt's quick. I feel we're heading for a crisis. No, no, I don't need any smelling salts. They're for me. <laughs> you're, you're young, Miss Hanson. Your whole life is ahead of you. But what is there for Mrs. Jameson? Now, you can make a noble gesture. <laughs> you can make a noble gesture, too, by handing her a pen. So I, I, I'm afraid I didn't bring one. I've got to think about this. She's thinking. Quick, get a pen. <laughs> there's, there's only one thing for me to say. Well, don't say it until I get a pen. It's no use. I love Frank too deeply, too, too completely to want to hurt him. Now, look, Sarah Bernhardt. Tell Mrs. Jameson I, too, am a woman. I shall send Frank back to her. You are more than a woman, Miss Hanson. You are a great lady. Please. Please go. Oh, brother. You deserve an Emmy over your head. Sorry, girls, but I would be terribly unhappy with Mrs. Jameson on my conscience. But with a wonderful guy like Frank and all that money, you could have been so happily unhappy. <laughs> I don't understand it, Greta. Well, I'm trying to tell you, Frank, it wouldn't work out. You're so serious, and I... Well, I'm just not ready for marriage. She's just a playgirl. A playgirl? Oh, sure. Show him how you Charleston, honey. <laughs> Besides, I want a career. Oh, yes, she wants to be another Sarah Bernhardt. Well, that's right, Frank. She's even going to change your name to Bernhardt. Kim Bernhardt. <laughs> There's such a difference in our ages. When you're 70, Greta will only be 42. And when she's 96, you'll be 124. Please, let's stop this nonsense. I'm just not the girl for you, Frank. Are you serious? Well, of course she's serious. Do you think it's any fun being married to a man 124? I... Loco, I don't think Greta can speak for herself. Yes, I'm serious, Frank. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. But there's someone who can give you everything you want, Frank. Someone who loves you and needs you as much as you do her. You may be right. I guess I never really gotten over the guilt I felt in leaving her. Well, there's only one thing for me to do. Of course. You'll never regret it. Every time we see an oil well, we'll think of you. Uh, uh, nothing, Frank. Just go. Go back to your wife. That old bat? <laughs> never. I'm going back to that wonderful girl in Chicago. <laughs> Jumping. <laughs> Goodbye, beautiful apartment. If I hadn't been such a soft-hearted dope, we'd be on Easy Street. This way, we'll just be on the street. <laughs> Must be our cab. Are you Greta Hanson? That's right. Okay, fellas, let's bring it in. Look, her furniture's coming back. Well, now we don't have to move anymore. Oh, how wonderful. Where, where did it come from? I don't know, lady. They told me to give you this. Dear Miss Hanson, please accept this token of my appreciation for sending Frank back to me. 
I'll be thinking of you constantly on the new yacht he just gave me for our honeymoon. <laughs> Elsie Kranz, the girl from Chicago. Well, Miss Bernhardt, everything worked out just dandy. Yeah. Miss Chicago gets the yacht and we get seasick. 